you look at the statistics and there's 50 some odd percent of the machinists in the United States are over 60 years old. The companies are just now recognizing, mm, Joe's gonna retire here, could retire today. One of the problems that I've had here for the last 30 or 40 years is that when I go out and bid a contract and I'm successful in that contract, and I need to expand is I have no labor pool to draw from. Raytheon said, we, we did it to ourselves, guys. We spent 10 years not recruiting, not developing machinists. Now we're behind the curve. Everybody knew that they were lacking, um, we were lacking, you know, experienced, skilled uh, craftsmen. Scott Stills from Sergeant Control, the president at the time, uh, said that this community needed more precision machinists if it was ever gonna develop. In the, if the aviation industry was ever going to develop. So we took that little cue from him and we did a survey. I believe they surveyed about 50 local uh, machine shops and um, about 25 of us got together at, at a meeting and it just kind of built from there. I said to them, if you want to help fix it, uh, let's get together. So the next step in that process is pulling all these companies together all with a common goal of fixing a workforce need and uh, then the next step is uh, finding out what they need to do. It started with the with the schools because we knew there was an existing program at, at the one school at Tucson High School and so we contacted them about how many students they have in their program and also we knew Desert View was starting a program and so they inquired about jobs. Uh, is there jobs available, you know, after graduation? And so that kind of led us together. First year that I was here, we had about 70 students involved. Right now, we're pretty close to 220. If you have a well-trained student at the high school level going into your company that you know that now is going to stay with your company, by all means, you would want to probably pay or fund more of that student's education. Selling this program or any kind of program that is not college outcome driven is probably not as hard to sell to the student as it is to the parents. The parents have all thinking their kids have got to go to college and get a degree. They need to promote him more, I feel. If I was a businessman, I'd be in like this shop maybe once a month just to see what they're doing. Because to me it feels if they need people that bad and they created this program, me as a student, I'd want to feel involved that they care about me as an employee, as a student, maybe eventually becoming an employee for them. Okay, see point X has plus or minus 72,000, point XX plus or minus 15. 005. 005. 5,000. Which means it's a pretty precision hole, isn't it? So, how are we going to make a precision hole? The SAMP has been good to us in one respect that's given me a new, you know, given us a, a definitely good direction of what we need to do in here in the area of uh, what we need to do with the students and also uh, doing the NEM certifications and those types of things. What, I'm, what we're going to be working with is we're trying to find this edge back here. We have the students that are training in this program right now, trying to get their CNC certification through NIMS. And as soon as that would happen, then we're looking at going directly to industry, making the, the choices for the students a little bit better, where they could either go straight into industry with a certification from the industry, or they can go to PCC. So do all your calculations, put the uh, thread relief in first, yeah. and then uh, turn your major, and then start your thread. So then we come over here and we check our compound, a compound set right. We need to set this to zero, right? But you first want to back it off at least a full turn, and then we can set it to zero. So that way we know we have enough forward travel. We have GTM 105 math classes, we have the inspection classes, we have the metallurgy classes, we have the manual machining, we have the CNC machining, and, and, and then the uh, CAM uh, as well, so that we can take uh, someone and get them a, a job. There's been a couple students who have been hired this semester, and they were actually entry level on my 110 class. There's been no uh, 
presence of manufacturing in a lot of the young folks' life. Because if I look at my workforce, I have kind of a, an age gap in there, where I have a bunch of folks at like the 50 plus mark, and then I have nobody from the, the mid 40s, early 40s down to the, the, to the uh, 20s. So the parents of these kids that are 16 probably are in that hole where I don't have anybody. So they don't have any exposure to that there is really manufacturing jobs left. So part of this program that we're looking at is to have internships where you will be in fact working with employers on a part-time basis, hopefully during the summer, uh, pretty much on a full-time basis. And then once you start to college in a couple of years, uh, then you'll be working part-time with the employer as well as while you're going to school. So it's actually a pretty good deal for you. It's a good deal for uh, the employers. And, and as you, and if you qualify, and many of you will qualify for the grant, uh, you'll be funded and your tuition will be paid for. I think what the SAM program is going to do is going to allow the industry to basically choose students coming out of this program and they're basically getting what they want. They don't have to go back and retrain these students because they're, they're at the ground level saying this is what we want these kids to know when they come out of these programs. Once we get them productive, they're, they've been good employees, you know, we, we've got good employees out of it. They're good operators at this point, but they're operators that have potential to become good setup guys, become good engineers in the future. We have today close to 15, 18 companies who have people working for them that they would not have had working for them had this program not existed. Educators, industry, and the government working together and it's, it's kind of unheard of because most people don't want to have the government involved, but really the government gets workforce money, uh, and, and training grants, and, um, and they're kind of the orchestrator. They're, they're kind of the middleman between us and the educators. The involvement by Pima County One Stop has been successful because they're not leading the group, they're facilitating the group. What, what kept me coming back uh, to the SAMP group was that we were trying to do things. So here people were willing to take action and uh, I think we were well moderated. You know, the Pima County One Stop did a great job of, of moderating and keeping us together. And we had some industry folks in there that were, were able and willing to do something, step up and start an internship program. So we had something that we could do and move forward. And so the, the ability of the group to take action is what kept me coming um, to it, participating.